guys What it do, what it do, what it do Listen, we're about to watch Dan Pena And we're about to listen to Grandfather real quick We haven't had a Grandfather, man I got one for you, man He's about to talk to you I think in the best way that he can He's about to give you some game Some, some gems Hopefully you take it, brother So good guys, man Today, man I'm here with you guys. I'm bringing you boys a video on Dan Pena, Pena, and um, he's gonna talk about stop wasting your life. Um, you know, good guys. Like one of the biggest things that I like to bring, content-wise, is like content that's really gonna like push you, motivate you in the most masculine way possible to be the best version of you. As I'm doing the same thing myself. So for me, when I bring you this content, it's out of a place of like, hey, bro, like I truly believe in what you could be, what you can do, and how great you can be on the surf. So I have nothing much more to say. We're going to hop straight into the video. We'll dialogue at the end a little bit about it, and we'll go from there, boys. But outside of that, y'all boys, enjoy the rest of y'all night. Let's get straight into the video. I know my energy is a little bit low, but you know, tonight, man, my Lakers lost. Uh, well, I'm sorry. The Boston Celtics won a championship, so my Lakers ended up going down, um, I think it was 18, 17 titles. So Boston's up one in titles. And titles take a lot to win, boys. It's a lot that goes into winning a championship. So uh, that's why, you know, I'm kind of a little sad right now. But we got work to do. I didn't want to make this video tonight. I wanted to go to sleep, go to bed. But... You know, like I told y'all boys, man, I'm addicted to doing what I got to do. And uh, we're going to make sure we get it done no matter what. All right, boys. Let's get straight into it, though, man. I ain't got too much else to say, y'all boys. Eighty-seven percent of the planet hate what they do. Look in the mirror. Most of you, don't, you know, don't like what you, they see. Not just because you, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're bald, you're gray, whatever. It's because you know what you could have been. That's his one kid, he's 28 years old, $125 million. What were you fucking doing at 28 years old? I've only got three regrets in my life, three. One, I'm a combat trained army officer who never saw combat. That's just the way it was during the Vietnam War. Two, I yelled at my mother the day before she died. I said, mom, mom, you're not sick. God damn it, you're not gonna fucking die. Next morning, she's dead. And three, I didn't set my goals high enough. Not because I missed my son's soccer ball. Not because I missed my daughter's prom. That's all rubbish. That's not what you say when you're about to die. And you whisper in your wife's ear or your son's ear or whoever's gonna give the eulogy. I regret the things I didn't do. I coulda, I woulda, I shoulda. I will do whatever it takes. And when I say I do whatever it takes, I fucking mean it. I know how to get you to the top of the podium at the Olympics. Not for a bronze medal, not for a silver, but for a fucking gold. If we're not going for gold, don't waste my time. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. But Bill Gates doesn't hang. Steve Jobs, who I knew, didn't chill. Warren Buffett doesn't hang. Elon Musk doesn't hang. Would you want your children to be like your two best buddies, or two best gal friends, whatever you call them? Uh, would you? Probably not. Would you even want your children to be like you? Probably not. So why, why is there so little being done about it? If I were to judge you by the guys you chill with, you hang with, how would I judge you, young man? How would I judge you, young lady? I'd probably judge you a dipshit. You hang out with monkeys, what happens? Your life becomes a fucking circus. Now, with the greatest respect, kids, this is not Barnum and Bailey Circus. You only have one time to make a first impression. The first impression is how you look. Now, I already know how I look, and you know how I look as well. Second impression is when you open your mouth. Most of you, with the greatest respect, uh, can't speak properly. You stutter, you mumble, you sweat, and I can go on and on. So you go where there are people that you want to be like. You find somebody that is, and my whole basis is mentorship, find somebody that is where you want to be 20 or 30 years from now and go to him or her now. 
I had the, the, the presence of mind to be attracted to some very, very famous, very well, wealthy people in my 50 year career. And I went after them to, uh, not, not for money, not for anything like that, but I just wanted them to talk to me and to share their wisdom. And, uh, the, and today people are afraid. We've had mentees in the last couple years that actually got through to Bill Gates. You can't stop trying. If you wanted to be a world-class athlete, where would you go? A world-class coach, right? In the 90s, the kids really were looking towards the future. Now I go back and I, I go to schools and now they just want to chill and play video games. Me And every beating I got from my dad, I deserved 20 more. Because he only beat me for what he, I got caught. If the nuns caught me, they beat me. If the priest caught me, they beat me. And then my dad would come back into town and he beat me because they didn't beat me enough. The first self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Who are you around the first seven or eight years of life? Mom, maybe dad, older brother, uncle, a grandmother, right? What the hell do they know about building self-esteem? We knew our parents told us crap. We listened out of politeness, most of us, myself included, out of fear in my case. But now kids, your dad, uh, a dad will tell his son or a daughter and they'll just say, that's rubbish. Dad's talking shit. Why is he telling us that? What are you going to tell your grandchildren and your uh, children 20 years from now when the greatest transformation of wealth occurred? What were you doing, grandpa? What were you doing, dad? Would you have your thumb up your ass? What are you going to tell them? You had your thumb up your ass. It, was, it may have been covered with uh, old Geneva or new Geneva, but you had your thumb up your ass. Okay, and if you want to build self-esteem, deal with people that have high self-esteem. That's not likely Elon Musk is going to have coffee with you. Maybe. It's not likely that Warren Buffett's going to have coffee with you. Self-esteem is um, what most of your parents didn't give you. It's a, it's, it's a form of self-confidence. It's a form of self-awareness. Well, it's the least informed thing that our parents know anything about. And when I get parents and they say, um, I did, you know, I didn't know any better. You, you don't know what you don't know. I did what my parents did to me. Did is the operative word. I did what my parents did to me. Now, what kind of teaching structure is that? Uh, most parents aren't um, capable of, uh, of creating high performance kids, unless you're Andrew Agassi and Steffi Graf. I mean, that, those kids are gonna be high performance in one way or another because they're both world champions. And so self-esteem is the bedrock of high performance. It's the bedrock of everything. And it's the least thing that is taught in schools. So what can you do to build self-confidence and self-esteem? Why do you think you're going to have it? Why? Because you deserve it? I don't think so. You deserve what you get in life by working hard. When my, our kids got out of, uh, and they went to great schools, when they got out of school, I said, I am hard. Olympic athletes say, you're as hard as my Olympic coach was when I won two gold medals. That's the kind of person you want in your life. Not somebody that agrees with you. Not somebody that says, it's all right, you can try again. You're only 26. You've got the rest of your life. That's crap. Now look at all these people in their 30s, 40s. Somebody told them that bullshit 25 years ago. Now look at them. Just look, look around the goddamn table you're sitting with. And I don't even have my glasses on. I see bald heads, gray hair. Be the first in the building and the last to leave. And my daughter says, Daddy, that's the janitor. The guy that cleans the floor. I said, yes, honey. Five months into her first job, she said, um, the chairman of the company, big company, said, whose light is that up there? Well, that's Kelly Pena's. What is she? She gets to work at 5 o'clock, and then he's leaving. Whose light is that at 11.15 at night? Well, that's Kelly. It's still Kelly Pena. If you're in sales, make 300 cold calls a day. 300 cold calls a day. For those 300 you, cold calls a day. Correct. Will it still work? No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We got kids doing there it right now. There was a question. We even got some lazy Dutch kids doing it right now. Just pick up the phone. Yeah, yeah. Make and I call. mean, for a, uh, for a Dutch kid, 24 years old, to make 20 cold calls a day, there's nobody's teaching sales in this country that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. In fact, there's nobody on the planet that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. I had a guy just do a $50 million deal. He said, Dan, if you had just told me I was 2,000 cold calls away from my first deal, I would have sent you a check for 20 grand 
and said thank you and I want to come to the castle. I believe in God, yeah. I, I think he I have no proof. You. Neither do you. I have no proof, but I have faith. Faith. And that's one of the, the missing things from your a, not a journey, because life's not a journey. Journey a journey for meatheads. Life is find somebody who you want to be like and follow what he did. Just like Socrates, Plato, and, and Aristotle did. 2,500 years ago. So I modeled to very successful people, and that's what the whole program is based on. Um, the, um, but I, I, I believe, uh, and the kids that are the most successful, whether they're the lazy Dutch kids that I poke fun at, or uh, everybody else, they, ha they, they have faith. But most of you don't have, and I say generally speaking, most of you don't have faith in yourself because you have low self-esteem, low self-confidence. You look like shit, you dress like shit, and you, you blame it on the 21st century, the reason why you dress the way you do. 25 years ago, if you come to a seminar. All right, guys, so I wanted to bring you grandpa because, you know, I just felt like, man, you know, granddad really just, he's giving them words out there, man. That's how my grandfather spoke to me. That's how my grandfather spoke, you know what I'm saying, in general. You know, my grandfather's just an African man. That was the only difference between him and my grandfather. But my grandfather was also a very wealthy man, very powerful man, um, you know, and a very dominant man, as Pena was as well, and a man that went in the military too. Um, and so when I say this to you guys, like, my biggest thought process when I bring you these videos, bro, is to really, like, enlighten you. And, you know, like I tell you guys, there's sacrifices that you got to sacrifice. And, you know, just recently, like, I was supposed to, like, I got invited to, you know, do things and go outside. But, good guys, like, there's sacrifices you got to sacrifice. You got to stay committed to, you know, good guys. And that's the biggest thing for me right now is, like, staying committed to my sacrifices until my goals are accomplished. You know, and right now, good guys, we've been on this goal for about four years now. And, you know, we're working towards getting to where we know we need to be. And so my biggest thing is I've been working on this goal longer than six, four years. But I took it serious where I've been sacrificing and giving up my free time, giving up my fun, giving up hanging out with my friends, giving up, you know, just uh family events and things of this nature to sacrifice these days so i can accomplish this goal because i know how important it is and good guys i am a dreamer and that's what i encourage you guys to be like why just settle to be you know uh the uh, everyday carpenter and just being a carpenter that does you know carpeting uh in your you know area why not perfect carpeting why not think about man well maybe i can make carpeting um almost automated system something that can be automated and i don't have to do it every day like these are the things that i want you guys to look even deeper in because this is where you become your greatest version you know when you just have the dream of just being regular that's okay if that's what you truly want to do cool you know what i'm saying that you're not going to set the bar too high for your children you know what i'm saying or if you do set the bar low and you're just trying to build it to your children, how will your children ever know how high they can truly go by not seeing you go your highest? So I just implore people to always like push to go their highest, bro. And for me, good guys, like I may not look or, you know, have the dressing or looks or, you know, charisma and all these types of things, bro, that, you know, some successful people have, good guys, but what I'm doing is just taking my time. I'm not I am sacrificing and going faster than what I should so I'm ahead in the areas that I need to be but I'm taking my time on my development and the things that I need to do now we are going to be putting belt to ass and foot to gas very soon like now we're about to be doing that and, and really getting back into the work you know getting back into the dominance on my work life you know what I'm saying and really dedicating more time into that so you know that's going to be a journey within itself but one of the biggest things for me, good guys, is really just locking in and doing what I got to do, man, and just being the man that I know I can be on a daily basis. And good guys, I want to just, you know, always implore you boys to do the same. Push yourselves to go to those next levels, go to those next feats, those next heights. Um, and like I said, good guys, I have a, a clear plan of action. I know exactly what I'm going to do, how I want to do it. And right now, good guys, like, it's just about staying focused, staying focused, eyes on the prize and continuing and doing what I need to do to be successful. 
And so that's what I bring to you guys is like the ability to be successful and how that looks for you and what it's going to take a guy to sacrifice this, bro. And I'm going to continue to bring this all June is sacrifices in many different words and many different verbs for many different men all around the world. I'm going to continue to bring you videos about sacrifices and to dream and to dream big, not to dream small. Good guys, I have a dream that will honestly change the world, honestly, and I'm going to do it. And I have goals for myself, good guys, that, you know, are for the average man, they'll be like, why would you want to do such things? Uh, but I just understand what my purpose is. And this is why I take my life so serious in the aspect of how I live and how I operate and how I treat myself and the things that I practice and the things that I consume and how I even try to speak now, good guys, and try not to curse, try not to, you know, do certain things that can, you know, really just put negativity out there. So these are important things for me, good guys, but I truly appreciate you boys for coming through, watching the video today. Uh, just stay blessed, man. Stay highly favored, highly grateful. Uh, I appreciate you boys for coming through. Please subscribe to the channel. Like the video, good guys, so we can get this to more of our brothers out there. And uh, yeah, man, just stay blessed, man. Um, you know, Yahweh is amazing. God is good, good guys. And I love y'all boys, man. Paul's no homo. Let's get up out of here, G. You know what it is, boys.